my boyfriend and I have had our share of things to deal with. He resigned two years ago from his high-paying physical job with terrible hours and hasn't worked since. He admits he wants and feels he needs a high-paying job since I only make $60,000 as a teacher. But he has not taken a temporary job and has been draining all his savings. His parents live in another state and still believe he works his old job because he is embarrassed to tell them. I have dealt with a lot of stress, including my first two years of teaching and a couple of health issues during this time period. I admittedly have a lot of clothes, lotions, and girly products, stuffed animals, etc., and have struggled to find a place for them in our shared apartment even when we moved to a two-bedroom a few months ago. Our apartment is currently a mess and I have things all over, including the second bedroom being full. Because of this, and the fact that my mom's house has a lot of clutter, I have old things there, and she hasn't gone through her stuff, or my dad's old things, even though he passed away several years ago. He has repeatedly accused me of being a hoarder, and has threatened to leave me and not marry me over it. I acknowledge that I need to clean and organize things, and my best friend has offered to help. That is a recent offer, and I will take her up on it, likely, even though I'm embarrassed. But my boyfriend is not perfect, and is not taking any responsibility for our problems, and is creating more. We were on vacation, and visiting his parents for the last week and a half. He helped by loading my things into the car, and drove the majority of the drive, even though I repeatedly offered to drive more. I spent time with all his family members, not only at the family wedding we attended, but also hours talking with him and his parents and other family members. All these family events took up a majority of the vacation, and I scheduled things to do around that. But during the last night we were there, he was supposed to help me pack things. I had bought some items for family and friends, some clothes and shoes, and was having trouble condensing things to fit in our car. He blew me off to talk to his mom some more, and was telling her in a conversation earlier how many bras I had. She asks a lot of questions, and I talk to her about it, and she mentioned she only owns four bras, and I should downsize. She even later told me I need to do that because her mother-in-law died, and they had to clean out her house, and I don't want to be doing that when my own mom dies. Anyway, apparently they talked more about this when I was upstairs packing. I didn't hear it initially, but later my boyfriend told me about what she said to him about me. This is what he told me Saturday night when I was stressed and we were leaving Sunday morning. Also, I'm leaving on a trip in two days with a friend and he continues to escalate our situation. Saturday night. He said it wasn't his responsibility to pack my things and that I shouldn't have bought souvenirs because I have enough stuff and am a hoarder. He threatened an ultimatum on our pending engagement that is supposed to happen by August, saying it's off until I clean up. He threatened to break up with me right then and there. He said I was embarrassing him in front of his parents. He refused to apologize or call a truce to resolve things later. He threatened to leave without me. I got two hours of sleep because I was up crying and upset with a migraine. Sunday on the drive. He told me his mom said I needed therapy for needing so much stuff and that I was very nice but she didn't want a life for him like that. I was very hurt and said I didn't know if I could stay with her after that. He threatened to break up again. He didn't apologize but seemed to make a peaceful gesture by offering to buy lunch and he drove the entire 17-hour drive. He indicated he wanted it to work. Monday, we were supposed to talk but he was dealing with a car issue. Eventually, I just said, let's talk tomorrow. After 1 a.m., he started a fight again because he brought a bag of car snacks he tripped on near the kitchen by my side of the bed, making it difficult for me to walk since I had other things near my bed while packing for my trip. He lectured me again about how I'm a hoarder and that I shouldn't be getting anything new. He said he wasn't going to buy me the Birkenstock sandals he's promised for two years or the dresser and shelves he promised to get me for two years. He also said he has a right to issue an ultimatum or leave the relationship since we aren't engaged or legally married. He also said maybe we shouldn't have moved in together. Just completely cruel and mean things to say. 
He claims my having too much stuff and not cleaning up is his only problem. He refused to apologize even when I was crying and having an asthma or panic attack. It is 4 a.m. and I am still up with another migraine. I'm supposed to help my mom with some things on the computer later today. My friend and I leave Wednesday morning on our trip and I don't feel like I deserve to have my life or trip ruined by him doing all this. I really need advice on what to do because I have put so much time into this relationship and I'm legitimately running out of time to have a family biologically. He still insists he loves me, but in the past, he showed remorse and genuinely made an effort to fix things. And I've forgiven him for a lot, including his making cruel comments about my weight and appearance and upsetting me so much that it's impacted my job and caused migraines. I'm so upset and hurt now. And though I'm far from perfect, I didn't deserve this. I need advice badly about what to say to him or how to fix things between us, please. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, sounds like he is setting things up for two months from now. When he doesn't propose, he will blame it on you. See, I told you already I wouldn't propose if things didn't get better. You can either wait for that moment and then end things, or you can go ahead and end things now, because that's what will happen. Let's just say that guys who have a job, a car, and a home, who actually love and respect their girlfriend and want a life with them, can still feel nervous about getting married because they don't think they are financially ready. Imagine then a guy who doesn't seem to respect or care about you, who doesn't even have a job, thinking that he's ready to move on to the next step of the relationship. It's not easy to imagine that person, right? It's still possible, of course, since it's not a 0% chance. But if you say yes, you're saying yes to this guy, whom you already know is like this, and isn't currently able to add anything to your financial future or stability. In fact, upon rereading your post, you've been in the relationship for three years. And for two of those years, he hasn't had a job, just living with you while you take care of most of the bills since he's living on his limited budget and can't spend too much extra. Comment two. A couple of things about you. As others have pointed out, other stuff I don't want to repeat about how your boyfriend kind of sucks. It is not your boyfriend's responsibility to help you pack. You are nearly 40 years old. I don't see him as being out of line for wanting to talk to his mom rather than help a 38-year-old woman pack. How much stuff did you even have that you were having trouble fitting into the car? I more or less lived out of a 2013 Honda Civic for seven months and had plenty of space. It really sounds like you have hoarding tendencies if you're filling up a two-bedroom apartment with all of your stuff and bringing so much stuff with you on a vacation that you can't fit it all back in the car. It was out of line for his mother to lecture you, but this sounds like a very serious problem that you very much need to get under control. Not so that your boyfriend proposes, you should probably break up, but for your own self. Now, for the update, a few days after we got home from vacation, I started organizing my stuff. I thought maybe if I just tried to chill things out a bit, we could get past this. I was hoping that just taking the lead would help us out. My boyfriend came home from work and immediately complained about the mess. He said I should have done this before we left for the trip. I told him I was trying to do it now and that it was kind of a big job. He just rolled his eyes and went to the kitchen. Then I noticed something. He had been saying he was down to his last bit of savings. But I found out he had been hiding quite a bit. I mean, I'm talking thousands of dollars. His savings had been going down, but I didn't realize how slowly. I was actually jealous because here I was trying to save for a down payment on a place for us and he was just sitting on a pile of cash. I honestly didn't care what he was saving for. I just wanted to know why he had lied about it. Then I saw his old job application on the kitchen counter. I don't mean like from a while ago, I mean like from a couple of days ago. It was for a position that was almost the same as the one he had quit. So he had been applying for jobs without telling me? I asked him about it and he just brushed it off, said he was still figuring things out. Then we had dinner at his parents' house. I knew I was gonna get grilled about my stuff and I did. His mom, 
made some snarky comments about my clutter. I could see my boyfriend squirming a little as she said it, but it was just the same stuff I had heard before. After dinner, he mentioned that we needed to talk about our future. He said he had some ideas. I knew this was going to be about our living situation. Sure enough, on the way home, he brought up the idea of living apart. He said it would be a healthy break. He said we both needed to figure ourselves out. The next day, I found a letter from him tucked away on the coffee table. It was just a bunch of vague complaints about my spending habits and my stuff. He said he wanted to give me some time to think about them. He said he hoped I would take them seriously. We had a camping trip with his family planned for that weekend. I was going to confront him about the letter then. I figured this was as good a time as any to talk about it. We were out in the woods, away from the stress of our everyday lives. At the campsite, I saw him talking with his sister, away from the group. Then I overheard him talking about me. He was exaggerating my habits and making me sound totally irresponsible and immature. I was actually shocked he would say those things to her. That night, we all sat around the campfire. I confronted him about the stuff he said. I also brought up the letter. He became super defensive and denied he ever said the stuff he wrote about. Then his sister sided with me. She pointed out his lack of support, saying he should be on my side. He got really angry and stormed off into the woods. Everyone was silent and it was super awkward. I went for a walk and found a couple of his things hidden behind a tree. I saw an expensive gadget he claimed he couldn't afford. I confronted him again and he just brushed it off. He said it was nothing important. Eventually, he admitted he bought it to help with his job search. He insisted it wasn't a big deal. Then he made this big ultimatum. He said either, I seek therapy for my problems or we should think about ending the relationship. He said I was the one with the issues. Things got even worse. He found out about the gadget sale and was furious. He felt like I was overreacting. I tried to explain that I was trying to move on and find a place of my own. He just didn't get it. This led to an even worse argument when he tried to take back some of the items he left behind. I had no idea he was going to do that. He said he had changed his mind and wanted them back. So I decided to donate the items he left behind. I felt like it was a step toward independence for me. I was moving on with my life, even if he didn't want to. Edit. I realized that he had been using my stuff as a reason to avoid facing his own problems. I also found out that the job he applied for had been filled. I moved on from him and found a better job. My life is finally getting back on track. Aida for booking my dream wedding venue. After my sister said she hated it, Aida for booking the same wedding venue as my sister and ruining her plans. I am 25 years old and my sister is 32 years old. Years ago, my fiancé and I planned out our entire engagement and wedding plans well in advance. My sister unexpectedly got engaged a few months before I did, and I was so excited for her. She began to plan her wedding for next fall. After I got engaged, there was this unspoken expectation that I would not plan my wedding until 2026, and I told her that I would wait, although I was pretty unhappy doing this. However, recently my dad almost died, and had to have a big life-altering surgery. And I realized that I was the one 20 years from now who would regret it if, God forbid, my dad wasn't able to walk me down the aisle because I waited for two years. I reasoned with myself that I would not invite out-of-town guests so as not to impact her wedding. And so the wedding planning began for next summer because that's when our anniversary is. Okay, this is where things get kind of messy. I already knew where I wanted my reception from years ago, and we live in a town where there's not a huge selection of nice banquet halls. This particular venue is extremely popular in our town for hosting weddings. When my sister started planning her wedding, she would go on about how much she didn't like this place. However, she did a tour and decided to book it back in spring. I personally do not see why having my reception at this venue is a threat. My guest list is less than a third of the size of hers. There are maybe five guests who overlap. The reception is in a smaller room tucked away in the lower level, and it is an extremely popular venue in our area where many people we know personally have gone. My parents support me as they know I've always liked this venue, 
and I'm not booking it to intentionally upset her. When I told her, she completely blew up, saying, saying how upset she is that I'm getting married in the same year as her and how she's never felt more low and insignificant in her life. She then texted my mom, saying that she's cutting contact with the family, claiming my mom betrayed her by allowing me to make my plans and ripping her to shreds, even though she wasn't involved at all. For context, she has a dog that we take care of for her. My parents love this dog. He is literally a grandson to them, and they've cared for him for the past decade. Well, she said she's not going to allow him to be taken care of by my parents anymore as some sort of punishment, and that she'll only have him under our care when she's working. I just feel really guilty that my mom was dragged into this for absolutely no reason not long after my dad had his surgery. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Ugh, family dynamics around wedding planning can bring out the worst in people. If she is ready to cut ties over such a small matter, this might have been inevitable. We can't control how others react, but we can control our own responses. Taking a step back from the bridezilla could be helpful. She might calm down and come around, but if not, it's not worth beating yourself up about it. If she was willing to go nuclear over such a minor issue, it's likely this reaction would have been triggered by something else. And if that's how she feels, there's not much you can do except continue with your wedding plans. Just remember, none of this is your fault. Don't let her ruin your wedding. Comment 2. She's 100% jealous you got engaged before her. I wouldn't be shocked if she really pushed to get engaged so that she could get married before you. Here's the thing about people like her. She is jealous of you and anyone else who is doing better than her. She will always be a brat unless she does some serious inward looking and people stop bending over to her will. She is welcome to throw a fit, but that's not you or your parents' problem. She's an adult who is almost 40. She can start to act like one. Now for the update. Two days after my last post, I got a call from my mom. Right away, I could tell she was upset. Moms just have this way of making you feel like everything's falling apart with just how they sound. She says, we need to talk, and I'm thinking, great, what now? Apparently, my sister Kate was still really mad about the whole venue thing, not just a little upset, but ready to fight. She sent a group text to the whole family, demanding to know why I picked that venue. And on top of that, she basically accused our parents of playing favorites, saying they were on my side and not hers. Can you believe that? So my mom says we need to have a family dinner this weekend to talk about it. I was kind of dreading it, but I figured maybe a nice home-cooked meal would help. My mom is an amazing cook, so I decided to bake a chocolate cake to bring along. I thought maybe a tasty dessert would make everyone a little less grumpy. The dinner was at my parents' house, and all my siblings were there. I got there early to help my mom with the food, and everything seemed pretty normal at first. But then Kate showed up. I mean, wow. She walked in with her arms crossed and didn't say a word to anyone. The vibe was so tense you could feel it in the air. My brother Jake tried to lighten things up by asking about the wedding plans, but no luck. Kate immediately snapped at him, calling me selfish for planning my wedding before hers. I was already on edge, so I just explained my reasons again, about how their dad's health scare made me realize I shouldn't wait, but then Kate had the nerve to say I was just making excuses. Like what the heck? Jake tried to mediate, bless his heart, but he just made things worse. Then Kate dropped the news about the dog. She threatened to take it back from our parents, which made my mom really stressed out. She was trying to calm both of us down, but Kate just kept yelling. She said she felt replaced and didn't want to be part of the family anymore. At that point, I was just done. I didn't want to argue in front of my mom, so I suggested going outside for some fresh air. I thought it would help clear my head. Outside, I tried to talk to Kate, but she wouldn't even engage. She just walked away, leaving me standing there like a fool. Jake tried to convince her to stay, but she wouldn't listen. It was like talking to a wall. A week later, I saw that Kate posted on social media about a new venue for her wedding. And guess what? It was the same one I planned to use. Are you kidding me? I got a text from a family friend telling me about the post because apparently everyone else was just as shocked. 
The family friend mentioned that Kate was planning a fancy wedding and that she was telling people I was a jealous bride. A jealous bride? I mean, come on. So at that point, I just decided to take a step back. I focused on my own wedding plans and tried to ignore all the drama. A month later, I learned through a mutual friend that my mom was really stressed. Apparently, she told this friend that she was stuck in the middle of the whole fight and I felt so bad. Edit. My fiancé and I decided not to have a big family wedding, considering all the stress. We chose to have a small ceremony with friends at a local park. The venue controversy turned into a blessing in disguise because it brought us closer to our friends. We hadn't expected to feel so relaxed and happy. As for my family, my brother and a few relatives attended the ceremony to support us. No one else came, but it was okay. Ida for leaving my husband after he let his brother ruin our new home and yelled at me in front of him. Itia for leaving my husband after he broke his promise and let his brother ruin our home. I am getting tired of my husband. We started dating in 2020, so for four years, and we have been married for two years this month, having had our wedding in October 2023. Today, my husband and I got into an argument where he chose to yell at me in the living room. I was frustrated because the house I bought literally three weeks ago now has a burn ring on the quartz countertops from a hot pot placed there by someone in the house, either my husband or his brother. I was frustrated because the house I bought three weeks ago is just getting wrecked. His brother moved in the same week we moved in and so far has flushed paper towels down my toilet, whacked my fire alarm because it went off, and consistently worn shoes in my house. So as you can imagine, seeing this on the kitchen island has triggered me. My husband starts yelling at me really loudly in the living room and kitchen, and obviously his brother can hear as his room is right next to the kitchen in our small condo. Now why does this matter? Because the relationship with my in-laws is awful, and three years ago, when his sister was over in the summertime, she took what she saw and heard and relayed that to her family. Now. Fast forward three years, I've been stalked, harassed, verbally abused, and defamed. He told me he wouldn't yell within earshot of his brother while he was under our roof. I'm just tired of it all. The constant yelling and the bickering back and forth have made me feel like I'm walking on eggshells around him for years. If I breathe or sigh too heavily, it's a problem, and he's irritated. He has said for the last three years that he will get therapy, then provides various reasons why he can't like I can't afford it, or I told you to use your flexible spending account and you won't. I just don't know what to do. I feel like the relationship I've had with my in-laws for the last three years and the constant abuse I've endured, largely because of the information he's chosen to share with them about my life and how I live, has ultimately tarnished the relationship beyond reconciliation. I'm 23 and he is 25. I feel like this level of vitriol and stress isn't normal. What should I do? We've been married for two years this month. Aside from this, there are just many things over the last few years that have ruined or weakened the relationship for me. One, in-laws. Two, having to buy my own engagement ring. Three, on the day of our courthouse wedding, he screamed at me so horribly that it's ingrained in my brain. Four, not paying even 30% of the $50,000 wedding. Five, buying our first house by myself because he ruined his credit. Six, choosing to work part-time for eight months before our wedding, ultimately contributing close to nothing for the big day and making me responsible for the household, which ultimately stressed me out. I haven't told anyone the truth about the situation out of sheer embarrassment and largely to protect how my family sees him. Everything about our relationship was not normal, from the engagement to the wedding. I don't know what to do, I feel like maybe I have blinders on. He was my first boyfriend, my first kiss, my first everything. Is this what marriage is supposed to be like? Have I made a mistake? When I think about having children with him, I genuinely can't imagine subjecting them to this. To add, his brother is 17. He's not really the problem, just a bratty kid with no manners. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, hi, OP. I'd ask you to reread your own post and tell yourself what you would advise your best friend in this scenario, and then listen to that advice. 
Why did you end up marrying this guy? There is really no upside to this. Starting at the beginning of your relationship, please don't trap yourself further and make a baby with him. No sunk cost fallacy. Protect yourself. Protect your assets. Get him out of your life. You are still very young. Enjoy. Explore safely and then find an equal partner. All the best. Comment 2. If his whole family hates you and he doesn't have your back, treats you terribly and refuses therapy, then this is not salvageable. You can't help those who refuse help. And when you marry someone, you marry their family too. Get out before it gets harder to do so. Talk to a family lawyer so you don't end up losing your house. Now, for the update. Two weeks after the last incident, my husband suggested dinner with his family to fix things. Just what I wanted. The dinner took place at a local Italian restaurant, a favorite of his brother who's been living with us. Yeah, living with us. It's a whole thing. Anyway, as soon as we got there, the vibe was just off. Like, I could feel the walls closing in on me. I was uneasy about my husband's family dynamics, to say the least. It felt like I was walking on eggshells, and the whole thing was just ridiculous. During the meal, my husband thought it was a great time to bring up the burn mark incident. I mean, really. He acted like it was no big deal. Like, excuse me, but I spent a lot of money on those countertops. The brother jumped in with his annoying jokes about how accidents happen, which just irritated me even more. I was like, dude, it's not just an accident, it's a permanent mark on something I just bought. When I tried to explain how it upset me, my husband raised his voice. Yeah, like our whole table wasn't already the center of attention, with other diners staring at us. The brother just laughed it off, saying it was just a countertop and not a big deal. I can't even explain how embarrassed I felt at that moment. I decided I needed a break from the table, so I headed to the restroom to collect myself. While I was in there, I overheard my husband and brother talking about me, calling me overly dramatic. How nice. I went back to the table and confronted them about what I heard, and it was just the most awkward silence ever. My husband denied saying anything bad, but the brother snickered and I felt so alone. At that point, I just wanted to leave, so I insisted on going. I told them I couldn't handle the situation anymore. As we exited the restaurant, my husband grabbed my arm and demanded to know why I was making a scene. Like, really? You're gonna act like this in public? The tension boiled over and we got into a heated argument in the parking lot. He accused me of ruining the dinner and making it all about me. Then out of nowhere, the brother called out from the car, mocking us both, and that sent my husband into a rage. I suggested they should be more considerate as a family, but my husband didn't respond. We drove home in silence, and the atmosphere was just so heavy with unresolved issues. Once we got home, my husband slammed the door, and the brother laughed as he walked in. I was furious. I decided to pack a bag to stay at a friend's place for a few days. I texted my husband, letting him know that I needed space, and of course, he responded with anger. The next day, I went to my parents' house because I just needed to get away from the chaos. My parents noticed how upset I was and offered their support, even though they had previously warned me about my husband. They were like, we told you so, but still, they were there for me. Then I got a call from my husband, demanding to know why I was at my parents and what I was doing there. Like, what's it to you? He threatened to come over if I didn't return home, and that just made everything worse. I was scared of a confrontation, so I decided to stay at my parents until things calmed down. The brother even texted me, mocking my decision to leave, which only made me more determined to stay away. After a few days, my husband showed up unannounced at my parents' house, demanding to talk. My parents confronted him and asked him to leave, which just made him angrier. He insisted that I was overreacting and that we both needed to work on our issues. I was like, what issues? You mean your issues that you're dragging me into? The tension peaked when he tried to enter the house, which led to a shouting match at the front door. He eventually left in a rage. The brother sent another message saying it was my fault that their family was falling apart. Like I care? My husband attempted to reach out again, but I refused to respond, and that just made my choice to walk away from this mess even stronger. Edit, the next day, I called a friend to help me move my things from our house. 
I couldn't face my husband or his brother, so my friend took charge. We packed up my essentials and a few keepsakes, and then we left. I returned my key and left a note explaining my decision. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.